Hello and welcome to another Sprues and Brews video. Today we are having a look at the new Kill Team Enactment box, the latest expansion for Kill Team. So we've seen a couple of these now. Back uh, last year we saw the Kill Team Octaria set come out, which included the Orcs and the Death Corps Krieg. Recently we had Kill Team Chowanath that had the, um, the, the new Sisters of Battle versus the Tau. And now we have Kill Team Nakmund that pits the Chaos Space Marines against the brand new Eldar uh, Corsairs. So as you can see this is a massive old box. And it's a similar situation to the last ones that we've got where you have an entire kill zone with board and scenery facing off against the two uh, kill teams. The Chaos Space Marine Legionnaires are made up of the existing um, kind of Chaos Space Marine sprue with a bit of an upgrade frame and then the uh, the Corsairs, the Void Scarred or a brand new Eldar kit. So first of all massive thanks to Games Workshop for sending this over to us to review. It is a huge old box. Um, what we're going to be doing, going through the contents, we'll have a look at all the kits inside and then we'll have a look at the, the Kill Team Nackman book within here as well and see what new stuff there is for Kill Team. So yeah, in addition to this we do have a full post over on the website as well where uh, we'll be going through all the, all the rules, all the models. Hopefully by the time this video is due to be edited I should have some of these models built and painted as well so at the end of the video we'll show off some of the, uh, the assembled miniatures and show what they look like. But without further ado let's crack this open and see what we get inside. So that to one side and as you can see it is a hefty old box. Like I say there's a lot of scenery uh, slightly older scenery in here with some of the Sector Mechanica stuff, but absolutely fantastic stuff. So let's have a look through what we get inside. So first of all, we get some of the pipes. These have been used for Sector Mechanica scenery. I think they've been used in Necromunda as well recently. Really nice set. Um, incidentally, if you are building them for um, Necromunda, you can use these mounts to put them on the side of some of the uh, the walls and columns, and then mount your uh, your uh, pipes kind of going up them. Again, you should be able to do that with some of the 40k scenery pieces as well. But yeah, they're really cool. We get two of these. I forget what they're called. Ferrocenic incinerators, maybe? I'm not sure. Uh, but they're pretty cool. This piece goes over here like a bit of a plasma generator piece. We get the main kind of like uh, in two pieces. The main piece here, so that becomes a circular piece. There should be some uh, floor intersections to go on top of here, and then this one. They're all quite modular. You can create like a big kind of like spire kind of uh, chimney piece, or we can leave these all modular and put them together in d different ways. I assume the book inside of this will have rules for how these various pieces interact with Kill Team as well. So they're really nice. We also have another one of them so you could potentially put one together as a big chimney and then leave the other sprue separate to use as kind of like scatter terrain uh, they, they are very modular i've built a load of this stuff it's really quite handy we get if we get it out of here flooring sheets that can go on top of the big kind of circular piece there's a few kind of uh, barricades and ladders and the like that can go on there. Again, all this stuff is compatible with the other Sector Mechanica stuff as well, so it is quite nice. And then the final piece of scenery in the box is the uh, the crane from the uh, Galvanic Servo Hauler. So you don't get the, the kind of like tractor that comes with it or the base piece that it goes on. Um, but you do get the full, the full crane. So again, you could probably attach this to um, the big the big tower piece it could fit to quite well and um, some of the zone mortalis to fit could attach to so yeah really really nice kit we did a video on this thing it's one of the very first videos we did on this site of this this kit and it goes together really nicely so that's all the old stuff in there obviously we've got some more models in there including the awesome new kit so let's have a look at those next so we'll put that to one side for now and what we'll do is pull out the Eldar Corsairs so, um, obviously if you looked at the, one of the recent videos that we put up as well for the Eldari Codex review, we looked at some of the new plastic kits that were out for the Eldar. Um, one of the pit kits that people have been anticipating is this Corsair sprue. Now obviously it is designed primarily for um, Kill Team, so 
like with the Death Corps of Krieg and the uh, the Sisters Novitiates before them, there's lots of different options on here that you can use the kit to build with. When we look through the instructions, you'll see that most individual models have got a couple of different ways of building them, to the point where if you wanted to build every variant, uh, you probably would want two sets of this. Now, obviously, for most people playing, you'll just build the, the 10 guys that you want. For completionists, if you, if you do want all those different operatives, you might want to pick up a couple of boxes of these when these are available separately, which should be a couple of months after this box is released. So they have said that all these um, these kits are available separately at some time. We've got the Kill Team Chalnath book to, to look at as part of this video as well. Um, and obviously that was only available separately in the uh, the big box that came out. So presumably, I don't know the details, but presumably the kits from that box will be available separately soon. So it's not going to be a million years for you to wait for the uh, the component parts of this box. But yeah, these kits are amazing looking. I'm really looking forward to building some. I really fancy doing a little Eldari force following the new uh, the codex coming out. And the, uh, the Space Pirates really, really appeal to me. So yeah, they're a really, really nice kit. Now the other kit that we get in the box is for the Chaos Space Marines, and again, like with the, um, well technically like with the Death Corps of Krieg, which was a, a kit with an additional sprue added, and with the Tau in the last box, this is basically an upgrade frame for the existing sprue. So we'll have a quick look at the exi existing sprue first, just to show you what you get. This is the full multi-part one, so this isn't the push fit one from the start collecting box, this is the, the full kind of Chaos Space Marine sprue, so I'm sure if you're a Chaos player, You've yeah, probably seen this before. Likewise, there's the other part of the kit. Again, it's really nice uh, update of the, the classic Chaos Space Marine sprue when it came out. It's got quite a lot of options as it is. What adds more to this is the upgrade frame that basically allows you to build your uh, kind of operatives that are unique to this box. So you've got a really nice kind of rotary cannon there. Looks really good. Two-handed axe. There's lots of parts here, there's like a Psyker on here, there's a nice kind of cursed blade on here. Some really cool heads including the really really happy Chaos Space Marine uh, Champion I believe he is, or a Chosen. Nice kind of like mutated looking Power Claw maybe. Yeah, these are, these are really really nice. I hope this is a sign of the kind of kits that we'll see when the Chaos Space Marines get their full wave, which presumably is at some point this year. Obviously we saw some early bits in the Eldritch Omens box, but um, yeah, I imagine we'll get a full release. So that's a really nice frame. Again, so we'll see with the instructions to build every variant of um, operative. You probably will want two of the Chaos Space Marine frames. Now luckily, I have actually got a spare Chaos Space Marine uh, kit kicking around the house somewhere. So what I'm going to try and do as part of this review is build all the different operatives you can do so you can see what they do in the game. So that is all the plastic out of the box. So let's pop this over here and we'll have a look what's inside. So we've got the Nackman rulebook. We'll have a look at that in a bit more detail in a little bit. We'll go through the kind of missions and the, and the options for the operatives first. We'll just see what else is in the box. We have got bases for all the miniatures in there. I believe they're 28s for the um, Eldar and 32s for the Chaos Space Marines. And you also get, which is really nice, a full kind of board to play on. So that's really, really cool. It means that essentially you can get this box. You do need the core rules, which are available either separately or in the Kill Team starter set. And then that combined with the rules, you can get some games of Kill Team on the go. So that's pretty fun. And finally, just lurking in the bottom of the box, we've seen these in the last couple of videos now. We've got the standard Chaos Space Marine transfer sheet. That hasn't been updated since the old wave in 2018. Yeah, 2018 it says in there. And the new Eldar Craft Worlds sheet that we've seen in the recent boxes. So you get one of those as well. So plenty of spare transfers for your collection. So before we move on to the, um, the, the new rule book, what we'll do is have a look at the assembly instructions because, um, yeah, you're gonna wanna have a look at these properly before you start um, assembling your kill team because there are quite a few uh, variant parts, there's a few different builds you can do, especially with this being kill team. You're gonna wanna see what operative you wanna take first. Now, 
I'm lucky enough to have a spare Chaos Space Marines brew kicking around, so I think I can make all the different variations of the operatives. Obviously, if you're building these for 40k, that's not really a concern, and presumably if you picked up this Kill Team box, you're buying them for Kill Team. But you just might want to check through to make sure you can make all the operatives that you want to do out of, out of the one kit. There's a few models where you've got a few different ways of building them, so you probably are going to be able to get the loadout that you want, and with a little bit of kit bashing, uh, special weapons and the like, I'm sure you could easily get a fit in where you need to. So we kick off with the Chaos Space Marines, and obviously the first model we can build an Aspiring Champion, the Icon Bearer, which is one of the new options out of the kit, and the uh, the Legionary Chosen, which is the jolly looking guy with the cool sword. So again, you can only build one of these. Now, the Aspiring Champion, there is another model that can be built as him, as is the Icon Bearer. So I, what I'd say is probably build that new Chosen using this kit. At least you can use that operative then. Uh, going on to the next model, again, we can build that as a uh, Acolyte or an Aspiring Champion. Now, this is the only body that can take that Balefire Acolyte, the kind of uh, caster within the unit. So again, for this model, I'd probably recommend building as that. Now, obviously, the problem you're going to have is that that body supports the champion as well so you are going to have to choose which one you build to get the most out of the kit if you've got a spare chaos space marine kit you will be able to build 20 unique models so that's cool obviously you can build what you need to build and you will still have parts spare on the frame that you can build as the the other options if you want to add them in the future so what i would say is that if you do build this and can only build some of the variations, keep hold of this spare bits of this frame, and then in the future you'll be able to build all the other parts to it. Uh, that model looks incredible, so that's a no-brainer for me. Likewise, the next model, you've got, again, quite a few options here. Um, the, the new kind of heavy gunner, which looks so, so good, supports that body. Obviously, you've got the, the missile launcher that's on the sprue, and a couple of... Um, Special weapon options for the melted gun. You can probably get it to fit one of the standard gunners um, with a little bit of cutting, maybe. So I wouldn't be too concerned about the, the missing out on the the melted gun because you probably can get it to fit on other bodies. Likewise, if you have got two copies of the frames, you could probably build the the rocket launcher and the the cannon just so you've got all the options for your various operatives. But um, I think most people build that just because it looks cool. Uh, moving on, we've got option of either um, bolter or pistol and uh, chainsword, and then the new guy, the Sherv Child Talon. He's the guy with the kind of like Bane mask. He looks really cool, so again, I'm going to have to build that guy out of this set. And again, bolter, chainsword, or you've got the, uh, the Butcher with his two-handed chain axe thing. So again, I'll be building that. We then get the option for the, uh, what is he called? The Anointed. So he's the kind of possessed looking guy. And then you get another heavy gunner option here, which you can also use for your uh, regular gunner with plasma. So you've got a few options for your gunners. Like I say, you're just gonna have to think about how you want to build your kill team to make sure that you've got enough bodies that support those parts. Um, that I mean, th this is an awesome kit. That's the only downside to kits like this where there's lots of cool variations for models, but not all the bodies take them, so you've just got to be careful. It's one of the side effects of having more dynamic models now that they don't all fit across all the different bodies, but with a little bit of cutting, you should be able to get any work. And like the, the plasma and the melter, if you've got a spare kind of bolter across the body pose, you probably can get it fit in. Uh, likewise, you've got another option for the flamer over here on this guy. And then finally, you've got another option for the icon builder here. So if you wanted to build those earlier kind of like unique operatives, uh, you can use this one. Again, the actual icon is just a piece that sticks onto the back of the backpack. So I imagine you could get that to go on any of the other just standard kind of gunner operatives that you want to use. Um, if you wanted to give him a pistol and chainsaw, for example, obviously there is in Kill Team there's a difference based on what you've armed him with. And you do get two of them on the frame as well. So, like I say, with, with two copies of the Chaos Space Marine box plus this brew, you can build, I'm fairly certain, every possible variation of operative that you can use for your games of Kill Team. So you'd have 20 models then to, to draw from for your full core team, Kill Team. So that's pretty cool. 
So yeah, they, they're really nice. I'm looking forward to building these. Like I say, at the end of the video, I'll show some progress on these. I'm hoping to have them all painted by the time the video goes out. So we'll show them and uh, what they look like. Likewise, we have got the Corsairs. Again, really, really nice intricate kit with lots and lots of variations. Again, you do get quite a few different options per body. So definitely have a read through first and see which you want to build. Again, with some of the weapons going across the body, you might be able to get them to fit on other bodies, but don't quote me on that because I've not built these yet. Um, I imagine most people building this box will want to build the unique operatives that could be made out of each kind of like triad of options. So yeah, it certainly gives you options for uh, picking up another kit in the future and adding them. But um, yeah, just, just be conscious of the fact that you can only build one of three for each build. And you know, just so you're not disappointed when you come to make it. And certainly have a look through the actual kill team construction, uh, the, the, the army list as such, to see which operative you want to take there. After this, you get the full instructions for the scenery. This goes together really, really easily. So uh, while you might be spending some time looking through the actual uh, operatives to make sure you build the ones that you want to get, this goes together really, really easily. And like I say, it's really modular as well. So build all this however, and then you can just uh, use it in any way for your games. So let's take a look at the Kill Team Knackman supplement book itself. So if you've had any of the previous uh, current edition Kill Team books, so Chalnath before this and Octarius, you'll know much of the drill here. Basically we get a book giving us some lore and information about the Kill Team in question. In this case we're in the Knackman Gauntlet and we are um, in a region known as the Coroplex. And this is an area of space that is encroaching on the warp. There's all sorts of weird mutations and nightmares and stuff happening for the inhabitants. And it is also um, a bit of a uh, hunting ground for pirates. And that's where we see the Corsairs in this uh, this expansion where they're fighting. So yeah, really, really cool. Like with all the other books, we go through the various factions here. Information about the, the, the area, the kill teams themselves. What's really cool that we'll see in a little bit is that we also get... Um, names for your fighters so name generators you've got a kill team name generator base of operations squad quirks and backgrounds just like we have in the in the previous box and again we get the same for the uh, the Eldari as well the Corsair so again if you are looking to add a bit of uh, narrative flavor to your games of kill team it's really good to have this on hand to soak up the lore in the background and learn about the various factions within um, and again, gorgeous miniature artwork within as well. Got to say the Corsairs look absolutely amazing. Uh, I'm really looking forward to painting some up. Fellow Sprue and Brewer Jay has been painting up the Corsairs. Uh, we'll probably have a picture of some of the finished models on the website. I've painted the um, the Chaos Kill Team. So at the end of the video, I'll show off those and, and see what they look like compared to the, uh, the existing Chaos Space Marines. And again, for the Corsairs, you also get your name generators and all that jazz. So onto the rules themselves. Uh, again, similar format to the previous books that we've got. It'll go through the, the, the various kill teams, all their abilities, all the profiles for all of them. And then we'll see later on, we get some rules for the kill zone environment and some missions. So first of all, looking at the uh, Chaos Space Marine Legionaries, the, uh, the Chaos faction in the box, we get their Tac Ops. So sacrilegious mutil mutilation. Uh, reveal the attack op the first time an enemy operative is in incapacitated. Each time an enemy operative is incapacitated, before it's removed from the kill zone, place an enemy corpse token underneath the operative as close as possible to the centre of its base. And then basically you can do the defiled for the dark gods action, which you do within range of a enemy corpse token. If you manage to do it two times, you get one victory point. If you do it four times, you get a second victory point. So quite an easy one to achieve if you're just murdering people. Uh, their second attack up is Dark Desecration. So reveal it in the target reveal step of the first turning point. Select one terrain feature that includes any parts with a heavy trait. If two or more enemy operatives are incapacitated while within triangle of it, you score one victory point. And if you can achieve the first condition at the end of the battle, 
the total APL of friendly operatives within triangle of that terrain feature is greater than the enemy, you get another victory point. And then finally, Savage Butcher. You reveal it in the target reveal step of the turning point. You select a friendly operative. And if two or more enemy operatives are incapacitated in the same turn, you score one. If three or more, you score another one. So, again, very aggressive missions there for the, uh, the Chaos Legionaries. For the Corsairs, we've got Flawless Raid. So if you had more victory points than the opponent at the start of the turning point, you score one victory point. And if you achieve the first condition at the start of the subsequent turning point, again, you get another one victory point. Soul Guard, you reveal in the target reveal step of the first turning point. Each time a friendly Corsair Void Scarred Operative is incapacitated, before it's removed from the kill zone, place one of your Spirit Stone tokens underneath it. And then you can pick up the Spirit Stones. And essentially, at the end of the game, if... Um, Friendly operatives are carrying half of your spirit stones points, you score a victory point. If they're carrying all of them, you score one victory point. And if none of your guys die, you just get two victory points. So, again, pretty good one to achieve there. And then opportunists, revealing the target reveal step of the first turning point. Select three enemy operatives. Each time one of the operatives is incapacitated, before it's removed from the kill zone, place one of your loot tokens underneath. And again, you can put up a... Uh, use a pickup action to pick up the loot tokens and you score victory points based on how many you're carrying. So again, a nice selection of stuff for both of those factions. Uh, looking at the Chaos Legionary Kill Team, we get to have six operatives. So you have one Legionary chosen from a Chosen and an Aspiring Champion, and then five chosen from Warriors, Gunners, Heavy Gunners, Icon Bearers, Anointed Butchers, Balefire Acolytes and Shrive Talons. And what you can do is give each of those operatives a Mark of Chaos keyword, and they'll do different things based on what they've got. There's also a bit of a mechanic in here where you can't have models with opposing keywords uh, within the same kill team. So, you know, you can't have Korn and Slanesh within the same force because they don't like each other. And basically, these give you a different abilities. So, Korn means that if you didn't get any critical hits, one of your normal hits becomes a critical. Pretty cool. Uh, Nurgle lets you uh, return and retain a normal save as a critical save when you're getting shot at. Slanesh adds triangle to your movement. Zinch um, allows you to use one of your dice as a, um, a 5 plus as a critical hit. Um, and then Undivided, if you are within Pentagon of it, you get to reroll one of your attack dice. So, yeah, pretty good assortment of stuff there. Um, it's pretty fun. Now, we do get some psychic powers. You do have a Psyker in the Warband. You do have a way of getting him to cast additional spells as well with some of the equipment. Fire Blast, pretty cool. Uh, a Blast Splash uh, ranged attack, basically. Malign Influence gives your um, a buff to one of your operatives. Uh, basically, their weapons count as lethal 5 plus uh, with a no cover rule and a brutal special rule. And then finally, Life Siphon is an offensive spell that then can be used to heal up a legionary that's within range of the target as well. So. Pretty fun, I quite like that one. Again, as with the other books, you get a range of strategic ploys for both of the kill teams as well. Moving on to the actual uh, kill team itself. Warrior, Gunner, standard kind of Chaos Space Marine stat line. You've got a range of weapons you can give them, the Heavy Gunner likewise. Moving on to the more kind of special stuff that they've added in the book, we've got the Anointed. He is really, really cool. So once per battle, he can choose to give himself up to demonic possession. If he does, for the rest of the game, he cannot overwatch, he cannot pick up, he cannot shoot, and he cannot do mission action. So, pretty big kind of losses there. However, every time he would lose a wound on a 5 plus, uh, that wound is not lost. He gains the ceaseless and lethal 5 plus special rules on his demonic claw. And it can perform two fight actions during its activation. So, really, really brutal. He's, uh, he's pretty cool. We've also got the Legionary Butcher with his ridiculous double-handed chain axe with um, 5 slash 7 damage, vicious blows and reap 2. He has got the devastating onslaught rule. So each time the operative fights in combat, enemy operatives within engagement range cannot provide support for that combat. So basically can shut down um, support from, from enemy fighters. And then also he basically counts as having a bigger engagement range for the purposes of uh, fallback dash and normal moves. So basically shuts down an area of the battlefield, which is really, really good. The Shrive Talon is an interesting one. He's a bit of a defensive fighter. Basically, he gets to resolve his hits first if he is the defender in combat, which is pretty fun. Um, if he manages to incapacitate someone, 
everyone within square of it minuses one from their action points. So yeah, pretty cool guy. Uh, a bit, a bit grim, I guess. He flays his targets, but that kind of psychs out the the opposing forces. He also has a unique action as well, where he can place a grizzly mark token within triangle of the operative. Um, and then each time an enemy operative would perform an action or the pickup action, if they're within square of the grizzly mark token, it costs them additional action point to do the action. So yeah, it's he's pretty cool. I quite like that guy. We then the Icon Bearer, classic kind of banner bearer for kill team, counts as being one um, AP or higher for the purposes of holding objectives. Pretty cool. And we then have the Le Legionary Belfile Acolyte. So he is our Psyker. He's pretty cool because he's a Psyker. He cannot have the Corn keyword because Corn doesn't play well with Psykers. Um, he can cast the spells that we saw on the previous page. Again, there's equipment that you can give him so he can cast a second spell per turn. And uh, he has demonic energies each time he fights in combat. In the roll attack dice step of the combat, uh, when you retain a critical hit, its target suffers two mortal wounds. So, yeah, that's pretty cool. And his dagger. Um, obviously, you're really taking him, though, for that the ability to cast those powers. We then have the Legionary Chosen. So he's one of the uh, the leaders that you can have in your warband. He's pretty cool with a pretty tasty demon blade. Uh, he's also got a demonic aura. That basically reduces the movement of people when they're trying to fall back from him. Again, pretty fun. And then with his Soul Feast ability, uh, if he inflicts any critical damage, he heals two lost wounds as well. So, really cool leader option. And then we've got the Aspiring Champion. Uh, again, he has a bit of more of a range of weaponry than the other guy. Um, so yeah, a bit of your, your standard leader. I think most people rebuild the, the Legionary Chosen because he looks cool and he's very happy. Like I say, they do have some equipment as well, so some cool stuff. Um, the, the book allows him to cast extra spells if you have the Psyker, that kind of stuff. And again, we get some Spec Ops rules like we have done in the first couple of Kill Team books as well. So you've got your Legionary Specialist, Battle Honours, you've got some rare equipment you can choose from. Strategic Assets, Requisitions, and also, like with the other ones, you've got your Spec Ops as well for you to perform during your... Um, Spec Ops game, so if you've not if you've not done that before, essentially it's I guess the Crusade equivalent for games of Kill Team. Uh, lets you kind of level up your guys over the course of a campaign and get some cool equipment and stuff. So you get all that in here. Onto the Corsair Void Guard. This is the the Eldar Kill Team. Uh, you have nine guys within the Kill Team. You can take the Felrark and then eight Corsairs chosen from Warriors, Gunners, Heavy Gunners. Storm star, star Storm Duelists, Kermite Hunters, Shade Runners, Kernothi, Fate Dealers, Wayseekers, and Soul Weavers. And the Corsair ability that they all get basically makes them do a free dash action each activation, which makes them really quick. You know, if you think you're not having to spend any action points to do that dash, your entire team is just able to some, at some point during their turn do that dash. So, pretty cool. Again, they get some psychic powers too. Um, you've got an operative, I think the operative for the Corsairs can cast two spells as well. You get a nice selection of spells to pick from here. So Lightning Strike, a nice AP1 uh, ranged attack. You've got a Warding Shield that gives a Corsair operative a 3 plus invulnerable save. Uh, Freezing Gasp is a bit of a um, debuff that uh, subtracts Circle from their movement and stops them from doing dash actions. Pretty fun. And then Warp Fold. Um, basically lets you swap the position of the Psyker with another operative, so you can do some shenanigans there with movement, so that's pretty cool. Um, again, strategic and tactical ploys for those guys too. So going on to the, um, the Warband themselves, they're quite fragile, 8 wounds and a 4 plus save, but they've got some really, really, really good weaponry. So for example on the Gunner you've got the Blaster, uh, Strength 5 slash 6, AP 2 is pretty tasty. The Heavy Gunner has got some really, really brutal stuff. That Wraith Cannon looks horrific with four mortal wounds on a critical and AP2. So, yeah, there's a lot of damage output you can do with these guys. Uh, the Duelist is a fun guy. He can you fire both of his pistols, essentially, for a single action. His Fusion Pistol looks really, really strong. Uh, obviously, he's only got a short range, but his AP2 does three mortal wounds on a crit. He's also got a shuriken pistol that gets fired alongside it, and uh, he can fire that in engagement range as well. So, yeah, really, really cool guy. Bit of a uh, 
gunslinger. We've got the Kernite Hunter, he's got quite a cool mechanic that basically he can use the bird to um, treat operatives that are concealed as um, engaged. And they have to roll a dice and there's modifiers based on various conditions, but he has got a chance of basically uh, revealing any concealed operative, which is really, really fun. I guess the bird just flies out and identifies the target. Um, Shade Run is pretty fun. He can basically do a drive-by attack. He gets to make a free move action and attacks basically during the course of that and gets a free strike. So he's pretty fun. The Kurnathi, again, similar to the, um, the Chaos... Uh, operative that we saw earlier is a bit of a defensive fighter where if he's the defense uh, defender in a fight he gets to do his strikes first pretty cool and then the void scarred fate dealer he is your sniper he's got a camo cloak that gives him an additional uh, retained save so this guy is probably going to be hold up in cover taking out guys with his sniper rifle the way seekers your, your psyker um, he can do two um, psychic powers if he if he uses that twice so again we've seen quite a good list earlier on the other page so lots of options that he's got for um, buffing debuffing doing direct damage so quite a versatile member of your kill team so I quite like him the soul weavers an interesting one basically it's a combination of a kind of a vox and a healer so he can increase other members of your kill teams AP uh, APL or he can be used to heal wounded operatives as well so pretty fun and then you've got your leader again a nice range of cool weaponry there and he looks absolutely awesome um, his kind of gimmick is that once he's activated he can pick another friendly operative to to activate so you get to use them one after the other so again really really cool and again, just like with the, the Chaos Kill Team, you get some equipment, you get some bespoke spec op rules for them, all sorts of goodies that they can have during their spec ops campaigns, and again, their own spec ops that they can go on as well. So, really, really fun. Now, obviously, in the box, we get a load of scenery, and within the book, we get uh, rules to use them. Now, what's uh, nice about these is that they've got a bit of a narrative twist to them. So, a lot of these have got kind of like in-universe actions that can happen while you're playing with them so for example the hatch you can uh, do an action for one AP go underground doing a bit of an exploring and your operative will get one XP for it um, really really cool stuff so being able to like open and close vents we see the big kind of steam stack later on where um, basically you can turn the kind of belching fumes off and on that does different abilities so I quite like the the interactive scenery in here uh, this combined with the previous stuff out of Chownath and Octarius at this point players that I've kind of bought into everything have quite a nice range of different uh, scenery for their games of kill team so I think that's really really fun and then finally we get a Nackman mission pack Again, this follows a similar format to what we've seen in the previous books where you get nine missions and they're all built around the kind of narrative of the um, the storyline within this book as well. So, you know, games within the Ackman Gauntlet based around the fact that we've got pirates and chaos and all that kind of stuff. There's nothing to stop you using these with the, um, you know, other kill teams or mixing these up a little bit. What I do say about kill team is that it's very much a toolbox and you can kind of take, you know, whichever parts of it work for you. And it's really nice that in all these books, it does kind of expand the mission options to you. I mean, we've got, what, about 36 missions in total now available for the game. So, uh, yeah, really, really fun. And before we finish, we'll have a quick look at the some of the contents of the box built up. So, as you can see, you get quite a lot of scenery and easily fills out a kill team tile. Uh, these are quite easy to spray up in kind of primary colours with, with some rattle cans. And then what I'm going to do is go in with some uh, some detail, do some sponge work to do some weathering and make them look a bit more uh, impressive than they do at the minute. But really, really easy to get, you know, basic enough to play some games with. And then we get the, the Chaos Kill Team as well. So let's have a look at some of these guys and, uh, yeah, take a look at what we've got. So obviously this is built from the core... Um, the core chaos space marine kit but with the upgrade sprue you've got some really cool stuff like this big rotary cannon 
Uh, where are we? We've got the Anointed down here. He is a really cool model with this kind of like demonic gauntlet, really aggressive stance and a cool kind of helmet on him. So he's really nice. We have got the Butcher, who again is a very nice model. I, uh, I really like this guy. Definitely cool if you want to go for a corn themed list for him. The Psyker, again, is really nice when we focus. So you've got a bit of demonic flame on his hand and on his blade. I uh, I really like this guy. Nice kind of like icon on his back as well, so definitely very word bearery. We then have the Chosen. He's a very jolly chap. And again, really, really nice model. So considering these are just kind of built with an upgrade sprue using that standard Chaos Kit, I'm, I'm really impressed with that. And then the final kind of bespoke guy in the box is the Shrive Talon. And again, you've kind of got flesh draped over the shoulder pads. If we want to focus, let's force the camera to do that. Uh, yeah, you've got flesh kind of draped over the, the shoulders. The cool kind of like Bane style mask on him. So yeah, really, really like this kill team. Um, I think the Psyker. Psyker's probably my favourite one. I think he's really cool. But all the models, all the models are really nice. And obviously, if you don't um, want to use those six, I don't know why you wouldn't. But you can build it as the standard Chaos Space Marine kit. Equally, if you have got another spare Chaos Space Marine kit with a standard box and this box you can probably build every variation of operative so you've got plenty of models then to use for your games of kill team so yeah really cool jay has painted up um, one of the eldar corsairs as well so i will stick in an image here so you can have a look at that and there'll be some more images over on the website as well so that was a look at Kill Team Knackman, the new Kill Team box from Games Workshop. Again, massive thanks to Games Workshop for sending us this a little early for us to review as well. Um, I'm a big fan of these boxes. We, If I only had one criticism on them, and the same goes to Chalnath too, is that I'd have liked to have seen the, the small format core rulebook being in these. I really think that's the only thing that's missing. Obviously you don't get all the, the tokens and the... Um, kind of the markers and all that kind of stuff. It would be nice to have a little rule book in there just because a lot of people are probably going to be splitting these boxes. So then you've got a spare rule book you could give to the person who's having the the other half of the box. Obviously if you're getting it for yourself then yeah you've already got the rule book. You you're getting the two kill teams and, and you know the scenery is a big part of it. I think basically all the scenery in the box would cost you about a hundred pounds separately. So if you say about thirty-five pounds for each of the kill teams that's about £170 worth of stuff before you factor in the kind of um, expansion book that comes in there. So I certainly think that it is a good value box. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what we get next. There's lots of exciting stuff that they could do in Kill Team. You know, squats, Dark Mechanicum, all sorts of cool stuff that we don't see kind of explored in the core games. And I'd like to see them maybe appear in some of the future boxes. So yeah, that was our look at Kill Team. I've got a full write-up over on the website as well, spruceandbrews.com, so go check that out if you want to know a little bit more about the game. Uh, if you're new here, why not throw us a follow? We do kind of loads of videos and unboxings and all sorts of gaming content. But until next time, have a great weekend, and we'll see you later.